France is a country with a very long, profound history. The French are well known for many things, such as their art, their language, their cuisine, and their architecture. Most people are very aware of the famous city Paris, or the Eiffel Tower. One aspect of their history that is not mentioned enough are the periods of time when French citizens migrated to other countries and spread their influence. The French have brought their culture to many places in the world, such as Spain, Burundi, Canada, and even countries in Latin America. One of the countries in Latin America that experienced a massive amount of French migration is Argentina. France and Argentina have shared a long history with strong cultural connections through traditions, music, literature, and cinema. And these connections are clearly demonstrated in the life and films of Daniel Tenere. So we must ask the question, who was Daniel Tenere? Daniel Tenere was a film director, producer, and screenwriter. He was born in France in 1910, and after working as a consultant in Paris, he moved to Buenos Aires at a very young age. His first film was Bajo la Santa Federación, premiered in 1935. In Argentina, he also directed 23 films, many of which took him to famous festivals around the world, like Moscow, Berlin, and Cannes. Those films were filmed between 1934 and 1974. He was married to Mirta Legrand, who is a very well-known Argentine actress, for whom he produced her program for many years. We've now learned about the man Daniel Tiner. So at this point, we must ask several questions about France, such as... What were the main challenges that caused so many people to leave France? During this time, France had recovered its pre-war stability, and the economy was actually very prosperous. For a time, it even seemed that the country was immune to any sort of economic crisis, especially the one that spread throughout Europe during the beginning of 1929. However, towards the end of that same year, and into the 1930s, France faced a number of problems during these years prior to the outbreak of war. The country was plagued by political instability, the rise of fascism, and many political strikes into the interwar years. The government, as a response, offered no insurance or compensation for the unemployed. So when people stopped earning, they stopped spending. The consumer economy slowed to a halt, and what was considered an ordinary recession had become the Great Depression of France, which was a turning point in the nation's history. We must also take into consideration what was going on in Argentina during this time. Between 1860 and 1929, the exploitation of the land led to the economical growth of the country. In the first three decades of the 20th century, Argentina outgrew Canada and Australia in population and per capita income. By 1913, Argentina became the world's 10th wealthiest country. This led to the immigration of many people from all over the world. Among them, 240,000 French people emigrated to Argentina. This led to the French culture to be established in Argentina and stay forever. However, this prosperity did not last long. Although by 1929, Argentina was a wealthy country in world standards, this prosperity didn't last long when the Great Depression affected the whole world. Followed by a series of military governments, there was a lot of social instability and economical issues in the country. When Juan Domingo Perón started his government in 1946, he brought with him a lot of series of uh, politics that were oppressive and there were censorship and inflation in the country. In this time, Tiner was able to direct eight films during 1945 and 1955. We've now learned about the history during this era and now we have to examine what did Tiner do? Tenere made it a point to break new ground of what was expected at the time, and many of his films pushed the boundaries with very dark subject matter. One example of this is in the film, A Sangre Fria. He directed this film in 1947. 
The film is about a couple who plan to steal a, a fortune from a very wealthy elderly man, but many things go wrong in the process, and the protagonists are thrust into a string of chaotic and unpredictable events. Tenere had to deal with many problems and restrictions, and made many efforts to see his artistic vision through. And this is particularly true in the events of one of his other films, Deshonra. Daniel Tenere directed Deshonra in 1952. It was the first portrayal of a lesbian love affair, and it tells the story of Flora, a woman who is wrongly convicted and spends time in jail where she meets Roberta, who becomes her protector. A large amount of people went to see this movie on the 3rd of June of 1952, exactly before the second term of General Juan Perón started. These people were not aware of the connection that were between politics and cinematography. Government were using cinematography as a way of propaganda, so they tried to show the people that they were in a better position than they were in the past. Even though Daniel Tiner was not a big fan of Juan Perón's politics, he wanted to create his films, so he had to accept some of the conditions that they were given, like um, showing that the society was in a good position, that they were better than before, but at the same time he wanted to put his little critic about the politics. How did he do this? He used metaphors, symbology, metonyms and was able to survive censorship. The movie were out, people will see it, but probably not many will be aware of what Daniel Tiner was trying to show. And at the same time, he was able to make his films. Tiner was well known for his work in the genre Cinematografia Policial, or in English, crime fiction. He brought his European influence into Argentine cinema through the use of several distinctive filming techniques, such as the use of very stark lighting with dark shadows, flashbacks, low angle shots, and close-ups to express fear and tension. He was also well known for using several artistic movements in his films, such as Expressionism, Impressionism, Cubism, and Surrealism. Diner has several links to Argentina. Even though he was French, he founded Directores Argentinos Cinematográficos. His cinema not only demonstrates evidence of the ties that link him to Argentine politics, but also show his skills in creating films that cannot be fully subjected to the pressure of censorship. In difficult times, it is ironic that a French director has such a responsibility to transmit to Argentine citizens social and political messages. His intellectual formation was a key element in the development of Argentine cinema that showed clear European influence for which Tiner was known for. My name is Arnaldi. My name is Abel. Thank you for watching.